Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at 303 Squadron. 303 Squadron is brought to you by Hobbity.eu. It is for one to four players, ages 10 and up, and games range anywhere from 60 to 120 minutes. 303 Squadron takes place during World War II, during the Battle of Britain. You take on the role of a British pilot, flying your trusty hurricane into battle. Now across the English Channel, the enemy forces, Nazi Germany, have gathered bombers and fighters to move across and bomb Great Britain. It's up to you and your fellow pilots to engage them and stop their progress. And so the game is campaign and scenario based, taking you through this great battle. Now a lot of the scenarios, or all of the scenarios, are based on real events that happened in this war. And a lot of the pilots that you'll get to play are real people that fought in these battles. All right, so let's jump in the pilot seat and take a look. Setup is very dependent on the scenario that you're playing, as you would expect. Now, there are scenario cards. The big thing on these cards is it tells you what page of the compendium to go reference in order to guide you through the full setup of the board. But there are some things at a glance here. It shows the rounds for the scenario, how many there are, as well as when events might show up. It also shows the starting position for the British pilots and the starting position of all the German pilots as they get ready to invade Great Britain. Also, it does give you a quick glimpse at what the objective is for this scenario. Now, each player receives a board that represents the cockpit of your hurricane. In the middle is where you'll place your pilot. All the pilot cards are dealt out randomly, and each of these pilots has a special ability, which you'll want to tap into frequently. Um, across the bottom is your damage indicator, and over on the right is your ammo indicator. And as these things drop, or as you take damage, it will limit the number of cards or actions that you can perform basically on your turn. And so you generally start the game with four ammo, which means you get six cards. So the way that works is it's the number of ammo you have plus two. So as you start to reduce your ammo and you engage in the battle, at some point you're gonna have to go make a stop back at base in order to re-ammo up to get back into the battle. And across the bottom again, like I said, as you take damage, it's going to start limiting your cards, force you to discard until finally your plane is destroyed. If it is, don't worry, you're not out of the game. You'll just have to come back as a new pilot. But sadly, that pilot has been destroyed. And for the purposes of this particular video, my particular player boards don't have the little dial spinner, which will be in the final version. But I'm just using cubes to keep track of ammo. Speaking of cubes, each player receives a number of cubes in their color, along with their plane with the matching color base. There's also a central board that will hold pretty much all the cards. The cards you'll be drawing and playing will go on this board, as well as showing you the scenario card, and when events come up, they'll be placed on this board as well. It also tracks the rounds. And of course, there's various tokens and different planes, of course, and dice that you'll be putting near the board for everyone to have access to. Now, again, based on the scenario you're setting up will really dictate how this board comes together. But what's neat is that it gives you kind of a start, the starting point for the Germany forces, as well as their track to their target. So you're gonna lay out tokens based on that track. It's basically the shortest route, but they do give that to you in the setup guide. All right, so there are several phases every round of this game, and we're gonna try to run through them quickly. If you're in a particular scenario where you have an event that's happening, or at a certain stage of the game where an event is happening, that's going to happen first. It's kind of phase zero. But really, phase one of the game is the player phase. Right away on this player phase, you have an interesting choice to make. Now, you have a pilot with a special ability. You can choose to use that special ability on this particular round of the game, and if you do, you'll flip that pilot over. But if you choose not to, then you have the ability to use a special dice later, which is the yellow dice. Now, why is that important? Well, most of that dice is really good. It's a bit of a push-your-luck dice, really. Either you're gonna hit 
whoever you're attacking, or you're going to receive two hits. But that's only one side of the dice, so there definitely is a pusher luck element to using that special yellow dice. But it's a trade-off. Am I going to use my pilot special ability, or am I going to wait, hold out, and use that yellow dice? And then you're going to draw two combat cards, which then also forces you to make another choice because you have to discard back down to your hand limit before you begin. Now, these cards have a lot of different things going on, but the bulk of what you're looking at here is the icons. In the middle are icons you're going to use for support for, with your other players at the, or other pilots at the table. You also have a movement over on the far left, as well as on the far right you have icons that will help you when the enemy does a counter strike. But there's also a special ability at the bottom of the card, so there's a lot going on and there's a lot of choices to be made as you delve into these cards and really start to learn the system. But for movement, one of the big things you're looking for in the top left corner is the arrows. Now, you as a pilot get to just move your plane naturally one zone, but you can move much further if you choose to spend a card one to three spaces. Now there's a couple other options you might be doing on this first phase because either you've taken too much damage or you're out of ammo. So you might be landing unless there's a event in play that prevents it. Landing and you're at an airfield. At the airfield you have four po action points basically that you can spend to either get new cards, replenish ammo, or repair your plane. Then we move to the combat phase, which is really kind of the heart of the game to some degree. But they've really streamlined combat here. It results in two clashes. And the way that pans out is that you have dice that you'll be rolling for you and for the enemy plane that you're attacking. Now, the thing here is that you can also augment those dice by playing combat cards. And so the dice have icons that we need to talk about. So you have hit, obviously you're trying to hit the plane. You have an evasion, avoiding being hit. You have a reroll of the dice and you have maneuverability. Maneuver is pretty important because it allows you to activate special abilities of your cards or get a maneuver token. And if you have a maneuver token, you can choose to play that token on an enemy plane, basically shutting it down until next round. And so the basics of combat in this game is rolling dice. You're going to take a look at your enemy that you're up against. They have their own set of dice. In the case of a fighter, they're going to be rolling two red dice. You, as the pilot, are going to be rolling two blue dice. And these dice are kind of represented in the different clashes that you're going to be doing in each of those combat phases. But the thing here is that you can just use dice and apply the effects back and forth, either evading, doing damage to you, doing damage to the fighter you're up against, and call it good. But really, the game gets interesting when you start introducing combat cards. And so the game does allow you to roll the dice before you decide if you want to play an action or a combat card. Now, playing a combat card is going to open up a whole world of possibilities. Each card has its own icon associated with it. You know, it could be a hit, it could be a maneuver, evade, whatever. But you are applying your dice to the card as well, creating a synergy there where you potentially could be activating the special ability of the card. But one of the really neat things is that you have support icons in the top middle, which can really start to chain into different abilities and allow you to do multiple things, especially in that second clash. If you're going after the same plane, you can really do all kinds of things. But really, the, the basics of support is that you're trying to create an icon set of three. It's a set collection thing. And if you're doing a hit and you've got a circle, well, the circle is a wild or joker and you get someone or another pilot at the table to play a card with you that is in the same zone, you get to apply their support to your card, which will complete that set. Now, potentially you could be using dice to complete that set as well, but it's gonna allow you to do multiple things. Like in that second clash, you might have support enough that you have evaded one of the attacks from the planes that are on top of you but you still hit that plane and maybe knocked it out completely. Each of the planes that you are fighting does have a toughness level that you have to pay attention to, and you'll be marking those planes with damage with your cubes on their bases. And so after all the combat has taken place in a particular field, well, all the planes, all the Luftwaffe or German planes that can counterattack will. They'll be rolling dice, trying to get hits on all the planes in that particular area. 
But this is where you hope you have saved some cards because as the Germans roll dice, there are smaller icons on those dice that represent the counterattack. And you might have cards in your hands that on the far right of that card have matching symbols. If you can shut down that counterattack by playing a card, it will prevent them from hitting any planes in that particular area. That's the thing though, is that in a counterattack, they will hit every pilot that is engaged in that particular area. But you hopefully have cards in your hand to shut it down. And then we have the German phase. And this is really them doing the steps of the scenario. They're moving closer to a bombing run. Whatever it is the scenario calls for, they will move towards their end goal. Now, the only exception here is if you had a maneuver token like we talked about earlier, and you've placed it on one of those planes, they're basically stuck for that turn. So they might be lagging behind in a further zone, but they potentially will catch up later. So the thing is though, it does put a nice delay on the planes as they try to reach their goal, their end goal of whatever it might be. In the case of this particular scenario, we were they were trying to bomb our airfield, but uh, yeah, it can be all kinds of different things. And so the final phase of a round is the reorganization phase. And it's really kind of a cleanup phase. You're gonna be moving the round marker You'll be checking to see if any planes landed at airfields, any of your planes, and they're going to be using those action points that we talked about, you know, getting more cards, getting more ammo, or repairing their plane, basically gearing up for that next round. And if your plane was shot down, this is where you'll acquire a new pilot and get ready to get back into the action, so to say. And this will go round after round until either you as the pilots have uh, completed your objective for that scenario or the Germans have made their way in and done whatever dastardly thing they're gonna be doing, that Luftwaffe. And in my case, they bombed our airfield. It was so close, but they did achieve their goal. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower Paid Preview. And everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now with that said, what really strikes me about this game is that it is very much a streamlined war game. And it's very accessible. I've played with folks who don't play these types of games typically and they really enjoyed it. Now, the thing though, is that it can span a huge campaign and you can have the game go on and on, right? As you engage in those different battles. And it really does evolve and there's medals and then there's ace pilots that are even coming into play. All kinds of things that we didn't even get to. So the game has a lot going for it. I'm really excited to see where it goes. I really wanna see if they come out with those Spitfires for, this, for the fighters for the RAF because those are some of my favorite planes of that particular era. But anyway, if this game looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.